All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at another fun mod, this time in the form of Adjustable Landing Gear by Bahamuto D. Ah, you gotta love Bahamuto D. So many wonderful, wonderful mods have come from that man. And this one is no exception. Not only is it good quality, but it is very, very useful. And of course, it's landing gear, so let's just jump right on into the space plane hangar and see what this adds into the game. Let's grab just kind of a random cupola module here for size comparison and uh, head on over to the utility tab where you'll see two lovely new landing gear additions in a small and medium size for your space plane needs. Now, if we grab the medium one, just sort of pop that baby on here like that. There we go. It's a, you can see it's a pretty Pretty big landing gear, kind of a quite large size actually compared to that cupola module, I didn't realize it was that large. And then we also have the small one here which uh, is still pretty big but not quite as large as the medium. And compared to the in-game landing gear that we have right now, it's uh, quite the difference. Very, very much different, in fact, and wonderful because, well, one of the newest additions with the game is we have these Mark II parts for our space planes now, and quite frankly, I don't really care much for the regular bog standard landing gear with how the new space planes can look, and this adjustable landing gear not only, in my opinion, looks much nicer, I, I love the sort of uh, bulkier look to it rather than this weird ovular shape that we've got going on here. But besides just kind of a cool new shape and design, it's adjustable. You don't have to just deal with this, because one of the things, of course, as you all know, the pain of putting on landing gear onto any space plane, if you put it on the fuselage, you'll end up with the weird angled landing gear. But this stuff, this is adjustable. No longer will you have those problems because if we right click on one of the, oh no, that's the cupola module we're clicking on, you'll see that we have on the landing gear all of these wonderful options. And these, these are all just in regards to steering and motors, etc. For the actual adjustment of it itself, we have all of this. Ha, ah, it's beautiful. So let's just start going through everything because. Well, it's a lot to go through here. Now, the first part we have is the spring and damper, and these deal with the uh, suspension of the landing gear. So, of course, the more you have them, the stiffer they're going to be on your landings and the more rigid. And I, I actually like turning them down a bit so they're not quite as rigid as a typical landing gear. And then we have the wheel height here, which uh, at a zero, or well, 0 0.2 is actually the lowest this can go. That is the location that the landing gear will be at, but if we increase it, we can make it longer if you are in need of that particular height extension for your aircraft. We can also add an angle to it, and if you just do that, you can see it will angle the wheel outwards, <laughs> and it's... It's definitely an interesting one. Uh, but yes, you know, like I said, if you do have one of these on the side of your fuselage of your plane, this is perfect because, you know, the, sure, the landing gear itself may be going straight down, but you can angle that wheel so it's perfectly in line with the ground so you don't get that weird turning you tend to get when your landing gear are typically at an angle. And finally, we have the leg angle. So even uh, if the wheel wasn't enough, you can also adjust this as well so we can move that angle out like that and yeah yeah I got a lot of adjustment there very very cool I, I quite enjoy that and uh, yeah we can always bring that in now here is the steering this is important because when you're uh, steering with your WASD keys this will judge or basically make it so that you're plane steers more or less. So the lower we have this, the uh, slower the plane is going to turn, whereas the higher we have it, the faster it's going to turn, which could, of course, make your plane flip over, and that would be horrible for you. Uh, we can also flip the side of this if you don't like 
that the uh, wheel is angling out that way, we can flip it around to the other side and just keep doing that. It works and is wonderful. We also have this auto align wheel button here, which when you click this, it will attempt to make the wheel perpendicular to the ground. Now, it probably won't work at this angle because, well, there's the ground. <laughs> So, if we had it on the bottom, it would actually work, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. And uh, now we can also, of course, raise and lower the landing gear from in here, so you can see it in all of its glory. Ah, you gotta love those quality animations, very nice. Now we have a reverse motor, so you can basically enable or disable your plane to have the ability to reverse just using the motors in the wheel. You can enable and disable the motor in general, so your plane can't even roll forward without the uh, jet engine on. We have brakes on off, an alignment guide, which is quite useful for aligning your wheels. I, I actually quite like this thing. It's got numbers and everything, so you know exactly what angle your wheel is at. And also good for aligning them if you have multiple wheels along the side of your fuselage. It's very handy. Uh, let's just turn that back off, though. We have steering, so you can enable it or disable it, of course. You can reverse the steering, which, ooh, don't do that. It gets confusing. <laughs> At least for me. You might be fine. Uh, we can enable or disable dynamic shield or steering. And then finally, we have toggle heat shielding, which I don't actually believe, from what I've read in the forum post for this, I don't actually think it adds any heat shielding. It just makes the texture on the bottom white or black. If its heat shielding is on, you just have a cool texture there. I like that. And yeah, that's uh, that's the adjustments you have available to you. Now let's actually load up an adjustable wheels thing that I made earlier to have both of these so we can kind of show off some of the features out on the launch pad. In particular, I wanted to look at with this the uh, steering ability here because even either in here or outside in the world, you can adjust the steering. All of this stuff up top, the adjustable height and angle and all that, you can only do here in the space plane hangar. But the steering, you can adjust that when you are out in the world with your plane. So if your uh, aircraft is steering on the ground too much, you can turn it down, or vice versa, of course. So let's just uh, head out. Well, actually, let's throw on some weird angles onto this thing so we can see it uh, a little more height, a little more angle. There we go. Who knows? Maybe that'll be interesting out there. And go to launch. And there we are. We have our lovely little <laughs> demonstration piece here. Now, if we over here where we've got some decent sunlight right now, the steering, let's put it all the way up to 50. And, oh, we actually would help if we enabled the steering. There we go. Now you can see we can move the wheel. Now, on just the normal mode for steering, it's pretty harsh, and you could quite easily flip over your craft if this is what you're doing. So, of course, caps lock, it goes a bit more smoothly, and it isn't quite as harsh, though it comes back to center very, very quickly. I don't like that, honestly. Uh, for the doing your turning, it's good, but then... If you want to return to center, bam. So you might actually want to start doing what I was just doing here of then uh, letting go of one side to then uh, turn the other way instead of just letting go entirely. That will center the wheel and it will probably bring much pain upon you. Now if we turn this down all the way, you can see that our turning angle, ooh boy, that is actually barely even, oh, because it's at zero, there we are. If we put it at like six-ish, you can see our turning angle isn't much. So we only get, I'm, I'm guessing that is in degrees, so only about nine degrees of actual steering. Whereas over here, we can go all the way up to about, so yeah, actually that looks kind of like 50 degrees-ish, somewhere in there. So that, that is what you'll get out of that. You'll either get a very wide turning circle or a very, very tight one, which will, again, probably cause you to uh, roll over and blow up your aircraft. And like I said, you can lock the steering. If you don't want to do that, we can turn on and off our brakes just like anything. I like the addition of the little brake light there. Very cool. Uh, we can enable our motor, enable the uh, reverse. We can raise gear, lower gear, so that our... Because these are all self-powered, so you can raise your gear to get more... Hmm, well, honestly, I 
I don't know much about gears, but I'm assuming raising gear, I guess, adds more torque, will help it go a little bit quicker, maybe? Correct me if I'm wrong there. I am I am not an engine guy. So, <laughs> and of course, uh, yeah, we've got the motor enabled currently off, but if we can turn it on and this thing would go under its own power. And like I said before, like if we go over to this uh, one that we have done all the angles on, we can no longer adjust those angles now that we are out here in the world. And yeah, it's, uh, hmm, what are you gonna do? So yeah, you gotta make sure that you got all of your angles set right from the get-go in the space plane hangar. But let's actually head back to the space plane hangar because I did chuck a couple of these onto an aircraft that probably shouldn't have them. <laughs> <laughs> the Aegis, or Ares rather, 3A, uh, is an aircraft that really does not need these adjustable ones. It actually works well with the default standard wheels, but I like them. I like these adjustable wheels. They kind of pop out of the top of the wings here, but they are glorious. And one of the things I wanted to load this for is if we go into there, and we should be able to show off the alignment in here. So let's turn on the alignment guide, and you can see that's currently a zero would be straight up and down, and our wheels are currently angled to four. And so if we hit that and go to, uh, oh God, where'd it go? There we are, auto align wheel. Oh my, so it bumped it out to nine degrees now, and our wheel should be perpendicular with the ground, which might be a little bit hard to tell, because our, yeah, our wings are, tilt it up a bit so I guess I guess that probably would be about right and of course since these are on both sides like if we flip these wheels they would flip back and forth and with this one actually if we auto align again and I guess it kept it at that uh, same sort of go oh actually oh it went down to five intriguing but yeah if we put it all the way out to 50 or 60 rather we could see when we hit the auto align wheel Bam, there we go. That should be nice and perpendicular to the ground. Very good, very cool. I am in love with this. I I probably should take this plane off and maybe like try and land with it, but <laughs> it would crash. I'm not a good pilot. But I still do love making space planes, and uh, these wheels are just so much nicer than the default wheels. I love all the little adjustments that you have for it. And yeah, instead of me trying to pathetically land, I think it's good enough we just show it off in the space plan hangar because then you guys can go and download this mod for yourself and give it a go and hopefully actually land your space planes with some nice new uh, wheels with adjustable springs and dampers and wheel heights and angles and, and more angles and steering and just all sorts of wonderful things. So please do go and check it out. You can find the, dis uh, the uh, link in the description as always. And yeah, that's going to be it for this episode today. Once again, this has been Adjustable Landing Gear by Bahamuto D. Oh, and I probably should mention that it does require the Fire Spitter DLL file. It doesn't need the whole Fire Spitter mod, just the DLL file from it. And yeah, the once you have that in there, this will work just fine. I've had no problems with these so far. They've worked very well for me, uh, even if I'm not very good with planes. It's wonderful, so go give it a try. Hopefully you guys will enjoy them, and hopefully you've also enjoyed this episode today. And I hope you do come back for the next, when we'll be looking at yet another fun mod for the game. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.